YouTube. This is a charger. When you get a charger with a ready to run airplane or car, you will end up with many of things like this. This is actually capable of charging, I believe, non-smart uh, batteries as well, smart batteries. But this one's definitely just gonna charge smart batteries with an IC2 connector. This one has an IC3 connector and a balanced charge port for up to 3S, show them, see? Okay, but there's another option if you don't have the budget to go all the way up to an I, uh, an S155, an S220, an S1200, and different variety of chargers in the smart arena. There's this one, okay? We're gonna talk about this today. It's the S100. Uh, this is capable of charging Gen 1 or Gen 2 packs, okay? Now keep in mind, uh, it is actually USB powered. Okay, so you are gonna have to provide your own power through a USB port. And I wanna show you exactly how this works. It might be a good choice for you. Evidently that plastic is a little stronger than I thought it was, good Lord. <laughs> uh, it, this might be right for you if you don't wanna spend the kind of money it takes to get into the bigger ones, okay? So the thing that's nice about this is it's a more simple, okay? It's still designed to charge smart batteries, which is nice. Got the anti-slip on the bottom. IC3 and IC5 capable, okay? And then this has two through four S. So that's the only thing I'm gonna warn you about is this is a six S pack, okay? So it's not gonna charge that. So the reason I show that is because it has an IC5 on it. There are a few four S packs that have IC5s on them, okay? And here's a four. And here's a little 3S that has an IC2, and this would be an IC3, okay? So now you'll notice that on this, there is a USB-C plug, okay? So you're gonna need to provide power into this from a USB-C cable. Now, if you already have one of the ready-to-run offerings, ready-to-fly offerings, this comes like with the Cletus McFarland version of the Sport Cub, or not the Sport Cub, the Carbon Cub. Carbon Cub. They come with a USB-C to USB-A, or if you get one of these, I think this is a ready to run, but I can't remember. I what think it was on. a car. Might have been a car, but they have a USB-A to USB-C adapter, which is kind of sweet, and then they have a USB-C to USB-C. So just depending on how you're getting your power, then you can use potentially the cable that came with it, and don't forget because you're going to have an IC3 connector, you may need to also pick up an adapter like this or an adapter that's like this, that's gonna allow you to plug in your IC2 type connector or your IC2 type connector for smart charging, okay? Now keep in mind those adapters both carry the data port uh, through and that's important because you need the data <coughs> You need the data line to charge, okay? So let's see what we need for power. This is a 65 watt uh, Ruco. It's a little, you know, AC to DC adapter here. It's gonna take you down to USB-A or USB-C. And this is a smaller wattage, run of the mill. This one happens to put out about 5.2 volts at 1.35 amps. So probably not enough wattage to actually run this thing effectively, okay? Remember. You can only charge as fast as your little adapter brings power in. But I am curious to see if the crappy one will work. So here's the crappy one. We're gonna use this white cable that happened to come from, uh, okay, so it does turn it on. It's got the beep that you're used to hearing. You can select the battery type. So lithium polymer, lithium high voltage, lithium iron phosphate, or nickel metal hydrate, okay? And then you can change the speed, one amp, two amps, three amps, six amps, and then you can start stop here and then you've got some different warnings involved. Okay, so I'm not sure what those warnings are gonna be for. Oh, but look, here, here's a, three, uh, a 3S with an IC5 end. So depending on, say you get a hard pack battery, and by the way, this adapter, probably not the best choice on this because it is rather difficult to unplug this style of plug from that type of adapter. But I really like these, especially if you're flying a heli that has only 
got an IC2 equipped and on it, okay? So these are a little easier to work with because of course you've got a little bit more meat to hang on to when you're pulling it out of the plug, okay? Now when they're brand new, they're also pretty stiff, okay? So if I wanted to charge this battery, I would need the adapter. If I wanted to charge this battery, I could just slide that up and plug it in. And then it's gonna start charging at six amps automatically because this is a Gen 2 and we set the charge speed and it's telling me we're done charging because it's beeping at me, okay? This one we charged just the other day. Okay, so we'll lay that aside. Now let's say we wanted to charge this one. This is a Gen 1, you can tell because it has a balance lead and this discharge lead. So we'll plug that in, okay? And then the option is you can plug that in to start charging or it will automatically start charging. Looks like it automatically started charging. But you can also plug in your balance lead if you need to. I'm kind of curious. Okay, so it stops charging. There's that. And then I'm curious if it'll catch on fire when we plug in a 6S. Let's see what happens. I'm assuming it's just gonna say over voltage. Yep, error, okay? So I don't exactly wanna tempt fate, but that's a 6S. The circuit is not designed to handle 6S, but we went ahead and took one for the team to just see what would happen. Now, I am curious if we can charge an off-brand uh, with the correct adapter. I don't know if this is gonna work. My guess is it probably won't because you won't be able to tell it to start, okay? So we like to showcase products here on Brian Phillips RC. If you're brand new to Brian Phillips RC, it's not the first time we've worked with the smart charger. We've done tons of them over the years, okay? So plugging that in, set the charge rate. Huh, it worked. Oh, okay. So you can charge a dump pack too. Yeah. That's pretty cool, but you will need to have the balance lead plugged in. Now I am kind of curious, let's break out the XBC 200 battery checker and let's go ahead and just disconnect it. It, it evidently was charging. Okay, let's see what our charge level is. So we'll line up the negative all the way at the back. So it's uh, about 4.08 across the board. So we'll plug this one in over here to the balance port. And out of curiosity, can you start it there? Nope, you gotta have the actual discharge lead in. Okay. Okay. Oh, I, is it charging? Yep, the, yeah, the little flashing there it goes. that just went on. Yep. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to take off my protective peel. Whoop. So there it is, guys. So you have another charger option. And it's pretty cool because if you really think about it, that is a super dinky power yeah. source that's going into it. I'm kind of uh, surprised that this thing claims to put out three amps when it's only getting a lot less than that. So <laughs> let's try with a bigger charger and uh, or a bigger adapter. And we'll go USB-C to USB-C. Uh, just to see if it works. <laughs> that was an amazing pun. So here on Brian Phillips RC, we do lots of puns. That's because that's what we do. Charge rate, let's go to six, press play. Oh yeah, so it worked. Now, <coughs> obviously, most of the time if you're buying a smart charger, you're gonna be charging smart batteries because otherwise you could use a dumb charger. Well, a smart charger will usually do dumb packs, but not necessarily the other way around. So it's pretty cool to see. Okay, so let's go ahead and pop this out. And let's see what happened. It stopped and I'm guessing it's because it could not deliver the current needed from the delivery system. Yeah, so it went up. I mean, not by much. We just right. had plugged in for a second. Uh, but you see how it says six amps? I'm gonna change that back down and see if it will go ahead and charge for a little bit and not stop. Okay, so three amps, there it goes. So now it's started and it's charging. Now guys, if you are brand new to the hobby and you're just trying to figure out the right charging techniques, you're in the right place at Brian Phillips RC. We're gonna walk you from the box into the air if it's an airplane or from the box to running if it's a car or a boat. And we've been doing that for years. And if you need to see anything that is like this, the smart spectrum equipment, or maybe even other chargers that we've worked on in the past, we have playlists for this right here on YouTube, or you can head over to brianphillipsrc.com 
and we'll take you right through the process alongside us. Now, keep in mind, there are many other adapters, many other tools that you can get, but my suggestion is, and this is the same suggestion I would have on a transmitter, get the most transmitter you can afford to get, and you'll never regret having a bigger transmitter than you need. Same thing with the charger. This S2200 is my go-to. It's what I use almost all the time. And yes, it is very good and it is very trusty, except for the display that I broke out. And I also did on the S1200 and I could care less because I love the charger and I use it constantly. Yeah. So it is the quickest, easiest to plug in and it works really good. So if you're looking for an upgrade from this, the next step up would probably be the S155, which is over here, but it is also got an AC input. So you don't have to provide your own AC to DC adapting, which is kind of nice. And then also this has a small screen that'll look just like this. Okay, so it's really nice and still IC3 to IC5 sizes, but only two through four S, okay? The reason I really like going up to the S2200 or S1200 is you add up to 6S compatibility, okay? So charging beyond 6S gets way more complicated and a lot more expensive. We've done that too. We've only done up to 8S on our channel, uh, but we will, we'll, uh, that's not necessarily true. At some point we'll do parallel um, or series rather connections. So two 3S packs will get you to six, two 2S two packs will get you to 4S and so on and so forth. But in this case, we'll help walk you through the entire process to try to help you learn the bare essentials and then you can apply those as you work through the ranks of your hobby experience. So here on Brian Phillips RC, we've been doing that for years. So we hope we can help you out. Uh, definitely would point you toward the 2200. The S2200 is one of my favorites and I really like it because it has a toggle rocker switch on the back and so does the S1200. I love being able to turn it on and off without disconnecting the power. I find that to be very annoying, okay? So, especially if you're like me and you have 4,000 of these chargers all set up in a certain orientation like this and you just want them to stay put. That's the way we like it. Okay, hopefully we answered your questions. Let's go ahead and check on this battery. I'm gonna press stop and then it stops with a beep. Just unplug this and we'll go back over to the uh, XBC 200, which is sweet because it now has the IC5, IC3, and IC2, as well as the balance charge, and then a USB-C and this uh, servo port for testing servos. But what you did lose from the XBC 100, which is ironic that you would lose a feature, you lose the USB-A plug, okay? That is gone on this device. And why do we know? Because we used it when we had a power outage just before we had uh, batteries for our whole house, okay? So plug this in. Yeah, we were charging cell phones with them. Yep. Yeah, so it's gone up. Mm -hmm. Cool, pretty nice. Now, just for grins and giggles, if you wanna charge non-spectrum batteries, you know you can do it, but just keep in mind, you're only gonna be charging up to 4S on this particular apparatus, and you're gonna be limited on the current steps, okay? So if you wanna go from, one amp to two amp, from two amp to three amp, and then three amp to six amp. Those are your choices in this particular setup, okay? So whereas on this, you can do by 0.1 amps, all the way up to 20 amps on this one, okay? Mm -hmm. So two 200 watt simultaneously port charges, which is pretty good. And then this one here, I don't remember how much it's limited to, and I don't think they really talk about it. Uh, it says the output is one to 20 volts, at six amps max, and the input is five to 20 volts at five amps max, okay? And it just, uh, it, on nickel metal hydrate batteries, you can do up to one through 12 S. And you wanna show them this. And on lithium iron phosphate, lithium polymer, or lithium ion, you can do one through four S. But it does not claim a wattage, and the reason it doesn't is because the wattage, of course, is gonna be dictated by the input wattage of the device you're hooking it to. So like this is 65 watts, okay? So if you're trying to buy that plus this, this is 55 watts straight through here from AC, which is nice. But if you've got this thing plugged into a cigarette adapter in your car, your truck, then you can actually do that, which is really nice. So this might be a good mobile application. Just make sure that you get all the different adapters that you're gonna need 
and there might be quite a few of them and that is true for any of these chargers one of them that i was just thinking of that would be really nice for this would also be the usb or excuse me not usb but the uh jst to ec uh ic3 connector so just like that so that'd be pretty sweet okay and yes you can use an ec3 connector i said that on accident this happens to be an EC3 connector, which stands for E-Flight Connector, in case you guys didn't know that. And then that'll be compatible with the IC connectors. And not compatible like you can cram an IC or EC3 into an XT60. That's not really compatible. They just happen to work, okay? They actually are compatible, okay? Uh, so there you have it, guys. So it's the uh, S100 from Spectrum. All new, well, a long time ago from Spectrum. But here on Brian Phillips RC, we review it so you don't have to guess, okay? Check it out. Good gift idea if you're looking for something. And we also love the XBC200, but I think it's out of stock right now. It is. So good luck when it comes back into stock, guys. Stay tuned. So much more from Brian Phillips RC. Ooh, other ways to support us, Patreon for monthly support, YouTube members for monthly support, YouTube super thanks for one-time donations, as well as PayPal. Those are all suggested, recommended, whatever you want to call that. But at the end of the day, our best, the best thing you can do to support Brian Phillips RC is watch videos, smash the like button, click the bell to when you do subscribe so you get notified. And then of course, buy this stuff that you like when you see it on this channel, whether it's this charger from the links in the video description below or a more sophisticated, more robust, smart offering that we have reviewed in the past. So we'll link to all the smart stuff as well as the items that we discussed in this video in the video description below. So that's one great way to help support us. Small commissions come back to us from the manufacturers we work with, distributors and partners that we have. But we are not married to any one of them. Uh, we show it the way they really work, okay? That's all we got for you. Stay tuned, so much more right around the corner from Brian Phillips RC. Thanks for watching.